Today we're going to cover using a containerized version of PHP. Containerizing PHP itself may not be practical for most day-to-day -day local development environments. However, seeing how we can utilize Docker containers to run different versions of PHP might provide you with that aha moment of how Docker actually works. In this example, we're going to pull down three PHP Docker images. One with version 7.1, 7.2, and the 7.4 release client. We'll start off by using them to run a simple PHP command, then we'll move on to running a small script with them. Let's get started. Since we know we'll be using specific image tags, let's go ahead and download them all now. If I run docker image ls, I can see a list of available images. I have none right now. I can pull down a specific image by running docker pull, the image name, colon, and the image tag. In this case, we're going to be using the CLI variant of PHP as opposed to the PHP FPM variant. We'll get into the PHP FPM variant later. So I'm going to add 7.1 CLI. And now that the image is downloaded, I should see it when I run Docker image ls. And there it is, the 7.1 CLI variant. I'm going to run the same command for PHP 7.2. and there are my two images. I want to run the same command for PHP 7.4, but it is currently a release client, and I don't know what the tag is, so I'm gonna look it up on the hub.docker.com documentation. So I'm gonna search for PHP, and the first result is the official image for PHP. And normally, the supported tags will be in this section here, but it seems like the length of the documentation is longer than Docker Hub supports, so you can go ahead and go to the readme here. And here's the full list of supported tags. I can see right here at the top, 7.4-rc-cli is available as a tag, and I'm gonna go ahead and use that. So we're gonna run docker pull php 7.4-rc-cli, and we're gonna download the image. Once again, let's check our image list, and we see that we have those three versions of PHP that we're going to be testing out. Now that we have the images available, we can create a container for each of them and run a simple command. Let's start with the version command. When checking the version of PHP that I'm running locally, I can run php-v. Now, I want to run the same command, but through a Docker container for each of the versions we downloaded. Let's take a look at the documentation to see what the image requires to boot up a container. This documentation is written with a bit more complexity than we need. Here they're asking us to create a Docker file, uh, but we just want to run a simple PHP command using docker run. We won't be creating a docker file just yet. We can modify this docker run command to suit our needs. Let's see what they have here. So we have docker run dash it. Dash it is for interactive and pseudo tty. We don't really need that for this command. Dash dash rm will automatically delete the container once it's brought down that may be helpful for us since we're gonna be running one-off commands. Dash dash name is to name the container itself, which is not really necessary for one-off commands. Dash v is to set the volume from the present working directory to a directory that the container will use. We won't be requiring this. The w flag is to set the working directory of the container. We don't really need to use this for one-off commands. Finally, we use the image name and tag and pass it the command we want it to run. Our modified docker run command will look like this. docker run php 7.1 cli and then the php command that we want to pass through. Since our php v command was run through the container itself, the resulting output is php 7.1. So what docker did is it used the php 7.1 cli image to create a container, boot it up, and run the php v command in it. Once the php-v command was complete, it brought the container down. Since we didn't use the dash dash rm flag, we should still have a container on our system. Let's check to see where that container is. Running docker ps shows us all the running containers on our system. As you can see, I have none. 
But if I add the A flag to Docker PS, I should see all of the containers, even stopped containers that my system has. Now here you'll see the PHP 7.1 CLI container that I have on my system that has been stopped. Let's go ahead and remove that container. We can remove a container by running docker rm and the container name or docker rm and the container ID. Let's go ahead and use the container ID. And the container has been removed from the system. Now we're going to repeat that docker run command, but this time we're going to add the dash dash rm flag. And we have the same 7.1 output. But if we look at our containers, you can see that it has been removed automatically. So I think you can guess the output when we use a different PHP tag. But let's go ahead and see what that looks like. 7.2. And let's try it with the 7.4 release client. And there you go. Now let's step it up a notch and run a PHP script in each of the containers. Let's start by creating a simple PHP script that will echo the string hello. Locally we can run the script by running php script.php, but we'll have to do a little more work to run this script in the containers. To do this, we will need a way to pass the script file into the container and have the container run it. If we go back to the documentation we referenced earlier, we can dig deeper into two of the flags we're going to require. The first is the volume flag. In this instance, the command is telling the container to mount the present working directory, meaning the directory that we're running the current command in, to this arbitrary path in the container. Second, we set the arbitrary path in the working directory for the running container. So what does this mean? It means we don't need to cd into this directory before running the command. If we didn't set the working directory flag, we would need to preface any command with cd. Like so. So what does our docker run command look like now? Well, we'll add the dash dash rm flag to remove the container once it's done. But then we're going to add the dash v flag for volume. Pass in the present working directory, which is the directory that I'm in right now. And then add user source my app. And then with the w flag, set the working directory. The image name. And then the command we want to run. So now we've run our PHP script inside of a container. Let's do the same for 7.2. as well as the 7.4 release client. What does this mean for us as developers? How can we use this in our day-to-day -day work? Containerization has many use cases, but let's cover one simple one here. What if we wanted to run the same script across multiple versions of PHP to see if it works as expected? If our script contains code that has been deprecated, we should see failures or warnings when running that script in new versions of PHP. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to modify our script to use a deprecated feature. I'll try to var dump a non-existent global constant. It's a deprecated feature in PHP 7.2, so it should work in PHP 7.1 and warn us in PHP 7.2. Let's try it out. So we're going to modify our script to var dump a non-existent constant. First, we'll run the PHP 7.1 version. And it works. Now let's try it with PHP 7.2. And there's our warning. In this example, there's room to get creative. You can automate testing a PHP application or a PHP package across multiple supported versions. This is also a great way to run older versions of PHP locally without needing to install them and muck up your local system. If you use a containerized version of PHP in a creative way that you'd like to share, or if you have any feedback on this lesson, hit me up on Twitter at JoseCanHelp. Cheers!